is now our next guest for making beautiful music continually sought new means of self-expression, uh, new sounds on the expanding number of instruments to help him uh, shape his latest composition, a Secret uh, Story. And uh, here it is, the latest CD by the great Pat Matheny, everybody. Here he comes. Welcome to the show. Nice to have you. Hey, how you doing? Nice to have a seat. Okay. Yeah, I'll bet. You know, you started when you were like in your early teens playing a simple little guitar, and now you've seen the explosion of these new instruments and new sounds just really revolutionize the music business. Yeah, it's true. I mean, what's become available to us as musicians in the last few years really, I mean, I was just a guitar player, yeah. and now there's from the guitar you can play any instrument and get any sound. The in, between the engineers and the musicians, that thing has just exploded, hasn't it? And yet I remember when it first was introduced, everybody was very, very nervous about that kind of technology because they thought it was going to put a lot of musicians out of work. You know, the truth is, though, it doesn't matter if you've got a, just a guitar or all of the most fancy equipment there is. You still have to come up with a tune that's a good tune, mm -hmm. and you still got to play with a good feel, and you still got to put a heart in it mm -hmm. and all that. And that's what makes music that I think people respond to. I mean, you know, finally, it really doesn't make that much difference. That's what I've found. Do you remember the very first song, the very first one that you wrote? Yeah, I do. Did you make a record out of it, or did it not, not <laughs> No, that was that would have been pretty early. The funny thing is, is that the, there are things about the first things that I wrote, this would have been when I was a teenager, yeah. that are still kind of consistent with the way that I hear things now. I mean, I've gotten better. What was the name of that? A little bit more finesse, huh? Yeah, a little mm -hmm. bit more. But, I, you know, names for me are really a problem, and they were even then. I mean, because, mm -hmm. you know, the music that I play is instrumental. Instrumental, sure. so it would be. So I could call it, you know, my dog Fred, and nobody would, <laughs> nobody would argue with you, you know. But, I mean, you know, to me, coming up with a title is important mm -hmm. as far as you just want to kind of give people an idea an of sort of what the, what the vibe is. Yeah. You, you, you've been living up in Woodstock all these years? I don't really live anywhere. I'm sort of like... He's uh, a road rat. Nomadic, uh, you know... You know, I, Pat, wait a minute. Did Kathy's hairdresser get to you today? <laughs> well, you know. I think your hair looks great. Well, I, I think your hair looks great too. I was going to say, I really, I really think she looks great. That's kind of my. I my guess I'm just the there, freak you know? in the train. Here. <laughs> this is the way my husband actually prefers it. Just yeah, sort of like wild, wild and crazy. Thing. Wild and yeah, crazy. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, started playing guitar at 13. 15 had a first gig. 19 made his first record. Won six Grammy awards. Wow, you've done just about everything. And now a, um, a symphony orchestra on the latest album? Well, that must be a kick, You've huh? dabbled in that, though, in the past. Well, I've done film score stuff yeah. that's involved uh, orchestras. I mean, th this record definitely is the most ambitious project I've done. And it's funny because it's, it's the biggest record I've done in terms of size, and it's very long. I mean, uh, you know, about it's About 80 like, minutes. Yeah. But it's also the most personal, in a lot of ways, the most intimate. Um, it's sort of a culmination of everything I've done. Isn't that to nice now. to be so able I'm, to put that all down on I'm one. really excited about We're this record. I mean, I've made like, God, I don't know, 16, 17 records, and this one is by far my favorite. And it's, it's really fun for me to actually see it out because it really just came out yesterday. So now it's like an actual thing that exists in the world. All that and work and you find yeah, it there it is. You know, we're anxious that, to that's hear. That's terrific. Cool. Well, you're going to perform Rain River for us, Yeah, right? we're going to do, I mean, you know, like you say, it's with the Symphony Orchestra and oh, So we don't have the room, all right? Oh. <laughs> but if you'd like, I'll be happy. So, <laughs> this is like a reduced version. Don't let him play piano on it. I was it. just going to say, I'll be happy to get behind the piano. Rage. No, <laughs> just kidding. You can do Rolling River. To the Rain River. Let's come back and listen to Pat Metheny in just a moment. With Rain River. Friday on Live, straight from Broadway, actor Alan Arkin. This is uh, Pat Matheny uh, with uh, Steve Rodby on bass and Armando Marçal on percussion. Armando's from Brazil. We don't have the symphony orchestra here, and we're going to uh, play just a portion of um, this song, uh, which is uh, Rain, Rain, Rain River. River. Yes, one of the cuts from uh, The Secret Story, Pat's new album, Just Out. Here he is, Pat Matheny. Thank you. 
singing sensations, The Cover Girl. Our next guest has been in love with jazz music since he was 12 years old. He recorded his first album at age 19, and he hasn't stopped. His latest album, Secret Story, is his 17th release. And here now to play uh, what he calls a real simple groove is Pat Metheny and his band performing Rain River. Take it away, guys. Thanks. So nice, <laughs> Pat Matheny. Uh, that's Marsal on percussion and Steve on bass. Hey, yeah. Wonderful. It's so distinctive. Well, you hear great. one note and know that it's Pat Matheny. Well, great. How do you I'm do it? What do you, what do you do to this other than this little toothbrush that I noticed? That doesn't here. have too much with, to do with the way I sound, but it does hold my strap on pretty good. <laughs> what? No, I think, you know, people say that, that they, you know, can tell to me usually, and I'm glad to hear that. I mean, to me, one of the things about jazz that is really interesting to me as a listener is that you, you know it's really important for musicians to establish an identity so that you know as they move around in these different combinations of musicians and different ways of playing they retain something special about them that you can identify yeah. and you play with a variety of people uh lyle mays a whole bunch of other people. i couldn't even begin to to list them but it, there's always pat Matheny. It's well right it's good i mean you know yeah. my, i think my sound as a guitar player, you know, has worked well for me in all these different situations with different players that I've gotten to do, so. Yeah. You know, what's so nice about jazz is that you can listen to it and sort of create your own story to it. When you write a piece like this, do you have a story to Rain well, River, or is it, is it a feeling? 
I mean, one thing for me that was always kind of drilled into me by older musicians that I played with is that every time you play, you should try to tell a story. I mean, each solo, each line, even each phrase should have something about it that has a sort of narrative sense to it. And it's certainly something I try to do, but I don't know that it literally transfers to words and ideas. Like you could say, okay, this phrase meant, you know, that that's where I was, you know, walking along the beach with my dog or something right. like that. You know, I mean, it's more, it's more a general sense of a kind of, it's hard to describe. Probably if I could describe it, I'd be a writer or a poet instead of a musician. Do you do music videos? Because we that's do. always such a literal interpretation of songs, which generally I find very disappointing because it's always a different picture than what I had in mind for the song. Yeah, I mean, you know, we do videos, but uh, I mean, I sort of take them for what they are. It's really kind of a commercial right. for your record. I yeah, mean, that's kind that's of it. the way they function. And, and you have been one of those very fortunate jazz performers who has enjoyed critical acclaim as well as commercial success. Well, you're Is not going to not gonna get too many complaints from <laughs> yeah. me in any department. I've been very lucky. And, you know, my basic policy has always been to just keep my eye on the music and try to play things that I like myself, that I really believe in. And mm -hmm. I haven't really made too many concessions one way or the other, either to jazz critics or to the commercial side on the other side. I mean, to me, they're both kind of things that can pull you one way or the other. Uh, to me, I've always had real strong tastes as a listener, and I really respond to those. I mean, I, I just try to play things that I would like to hear, and um, and it is appealing to a large number of people, including I hope so. myself. Well, thanks. I appreciate <laughs> Thank that. Thank you so much for being My with pleasure. us tonight. Thanks it was for, wonderful. For thanks, us. guys, and Boyd's a fan too. Over right. to you, Boyd. <laughs> uh, thanks, Cassandra. That's it for this edition of Real Life. For everyone that's been a part of this one, uh, thanks for joining us. And since the guys are all set up, let's hear a little more music from Pat Metheny. This is called uh, It's Just Talk. Thank you.